نحن لا نريد الموت لأحد وإنما ندفع الموت عن شعبنا The regime built by Hafez al-Assad over the course of his decades in power and the international influence he cultivated was no less brilliant than the internal policies he implemented. He was well aware of how to ensure the survival of the Ba'ath party by ingraining it into every aspect of the state. He was especially successful at perpetuating his line of succession, transferring power to his son and ensuring the survival of the Alawite Assad dynasty, despite the fact that Syria is officially a republic. Assad's ability to consolidate all aspects of government around a central figure allowed his legacy to survive. The Syrian people had to endure a crisis never before seen by their country. With the Arab Spring affecting other nations in the region, the Syrian experience, despite a similarly peaceful beginning characterized by marches and calls for freedom, the situation snowballed into demands for regime change and into a full-blown revolution. Beginning in Dir'a in the south and spreading to Aleppo and Idlib in the far north, all the way up to the Turkish border. It has been described as the Syrian revolution by some, as a crisis or conflict, or even as a full-blown war by others. Whatever its name, the daily clashes between loyalist forces and rebels are violent in the extreme. Dozens are wounded and killed in fighting across the country on a daily basis, and as a result, cracks began to appear in the forces loyal to Assad. Defections took place at various levels, beginning with Private Walid al-Qashmai and proceeding through the ranks to high-ranking officers, sending a clear message that the killing of fellow Syrians, as per Bashar al-Assad's orders, would not go unopposed. Some of the defectors, be they soldiers or commanders, have left Syria. But others remained and took upon themselves a new mission to face down the regime. A strategy had to be drawn up in order to combat the regular army, which was killing anyone who stood up against the regime seeking freedom. Everyone now had to take up arms and new units consisted mostly of inexperienced civilians led by a handful of officers and veterans who had defected from the regime. Following three months of rising defections from the regular Syrian army, the announcement was made confirming the formation of a unified rebel command structure. This was dubbed the Free Officers Brigade. It was under the command of Hussein Harmouche. Two months later, the formation of the Free Syrian Army, the FSA, was announced, led by Riyad al-Assad. <laughs> For the coming months, these two organizations would each declare responsibility for dozens of combat operations until both the Free Syrian Army and the Free Officers Brigade merged in mid September. <laughs> والعسكريين المشقين قاموا بتأسيس 
هذا الجيش ليستوعب كافة العسكريين المشقين The increased rate of defections on the part of officers and enlisted men and the large numbers joining the FSA was reflected in the formation of new fighting battalions, companies and platoons which were ready to take positions across the country in every city, town and village. نحن نتكون في منطقة معرة النعمان الغربية والشرقية غرب معرة النعمان وشرقي معرة النعمان نتألف من عدة كتائب كل كتيبة مسؤولي عن قطاع عام مسؤولي عن قطاع خاص فيها للعمل فيها. There is no more doubt about the fact that this is all-out war between the resistance and the Syrian regime, whose military machine has wreaked havoc on the ground and upon the Syrian people. Resistance is seen as the only means to stop the cycle of violence and destruction. Armored formations sweep through Syria's cities, crushing people beneath their treads, while the regime's snipers reap a bloody toll from the roofs of buildings. The resistance necessitated by the regime's actions believes this to be a struggle to survive and can see no other way to stop their families falling victim to the regime's heavy hand. <laughs> جهاد دفع وجهاد طلب فعندما تكون دولة إسلامية ونريد أن نغزو دولة أخرى ونطلب دولة أخرى هذا جهاد طلب وعندما نكون نحن المستضعفين وتقاتلنا دولة أو دول أخرى هذا جهاد الدفع يكون The weapons used by the rebels are light and basic armaments not really a match for the armaments of the regular Syrian army. However, the fighting spirit of the individuals wielding it, determined as they are to oppose tyranny, is great. They fully realize that now this conflict has begun, there is no turning back. <laughs> لا يوجد حل سياسي لا أعتقد أنا شخصيا لا أعتقد هناك حل سياسي الخيار اللي اختاره بشار الأسد خيار شمشون وأنا قلت بعبارة مختصرة أما أحكمكم وأما أقتلكم هذا خياره يا بتخضعوا لحكمي يا أنا ما أشي للقتل على الأخير يا بتقتلوني يا بقتلكم Bloody battles are being fought every day between the rebels and the regular army. The strategic map is ever changing, as each side affects strategic withdrawals, attacking and retreating as necessary. Areas switch between loyalist and rebel control on a daily basis, and it is difficult for the rebels, especially, to maintain control over liberated areas as they lack both the consolidated strategy to combat the regime's greater resources, namely heavy armor, assault helicopters and MiG fighter jets. Rebel field commanders often have to improvise on the spot. The strategy of the military for the Syrian army is changing. So, as you know, we would say أننا في البداية للدفاع عن المتظاهرين ثم انتقلت في مراحل إلى أن للدفاع عن جيش سوري الحار للدفاع عن المدن للدفاع إلى أن انتقلنا إلى مرحلة الهجوم من أجل الدفاع وفي هذا وفي كل المراحل كنا نعتمد أسلوب واحد هو أسلوب حرب العصابات وحرب العصابات يعتمد على العنصر على السلاح الخفيف. The rebels have excelled at guerrilla warfare, finding it to be most suited to their limited abilities. After a fierce battle, rebel fighters converge on their commanders for further instructions, and thence for a much-needed breather. Their bodies are tired, 
but their souls are full of fire. The rebels' overall strategy has proven very effective. They successfully managed to organize strikes within certain parts of the capital Damascus, going as far as to deal the regime a terrifying blow by attacking the national security headquarters, demonstrating their ability to strike almost anywhere. أو عدة عناصر من داخل مكتب الأمن القومي ليقوموا بتنفيذ تلك العملية. But resistance comes at a steep price. The scale of the destruction seen here reflects the ferocity of the pro-Assad offensive and the terrible cost in human lives that it extracted. Sites of major engagements are littered with the rubble of buildings and infrastructure. Empty streets and homes are a testament to the destructive and disproportionate force unleashed by Assad loyalists, which only goes to highlight the determination of the rebels through their survival. استخدم معنا الدبابات، استخدم معنا المدفعية، استخدم معنا الهاون، استخدم معنا مضادات الدروع، استخدم معنا استخدم معنا القنابل، استخدم الفراغية بأعزاز وبحمص وبحما، استخدم صواريخ، استخدم كل شيء، ولم يستطيع أن يخمد هذه الثورة بفضل الله تعالى. This is an improvised training camp of modest means. where aspiring rebel soldiers train with what little equipment is available. This training is administered by veterans of the conflict, who instruct them in tried and tested battlefield tactics. After completing their basic training with weapons, they will join their brothers on the fields of battle. فبندرب الشباب بدورة شرعية بتتجوز العشرة أيام بين العشرة والخمسة عشر يوم وبعديها بنفوتهم على معسكر تدريبي كذلك الأمر بين الخمسة عشر والعشرين يوم عفوا بين الخمسة عشر والعشرين يوم بيتم تدريبهم تدريب فقهي تدريب جهادي تدريب يعرفوا إنه إذا إذا قاتلوا ليش عم بيقاتلوا أو إذا استشهدوا استشهدوا بيروحوا على الجنة ولا بيروح بيروحوا على النار. أنا أرض الميدان مقات حامل رشاش بي كيسي وعلى الدوشكة إسقاط الطائرات الهليكوبتر. هاي اختصاصي. إذا ما في طائرات تغطية للإخوان المقاتلين في تقدم بهذا الرشاش أغطي لهم ال Bashar al-Assad depended heavily on his security apparatus to run the country. As such, the rebels were well advised to take extra precautions to limit the danger of enemy agents infiltrating their ranks. Thus, they are very vigilant, watching carefully their recruits to minimize the risk to the resistance. في كل استقبال عنصر جديد هناك له مراقبة مراقبة أمنية ومراقبة سلوكية ومراقبة على كافة الجهات أول ما بنستقبل العنصر طبعا ما من دغري من حطه دغري في المعركة أول ما بنستقبل العنصر أول شيء من دربه من هيئه نفسيا وذاتيا وبعدين من من إذا كان سيقة وأهل المعركة من نزبع المعركة مباشرة the Syrian revolution has attracted veterans of other conflicts, individuals who fought in their own nation's struggles for freedom during the Arab Spring, who gravitated to Syria to provide aid to their fellow rebels, spurred by the legitimacy and necessity of the fight against Assad's tyrannous regime. Their support and practical experience have proven invaluable to the rebels in Syria.
جراح الأمة العربية جراح واحدة وسبب الثورات في الوطن العربي أسبابها واحدة نعم قد أتينا قد أتى إلينا إخوة من ليبيا ومن تونس وخاصة من كانت في بلادهم ثورات لأنهم آلامنا مشتركة وآمالنا مشتركة فأرادوا أن يواسون الجراح فهم انتصروا على رؤسائهم وأتوا ليكملوا معنا Severely under-equipped and lacking any real supply lines, rebel soldiers are forced to fight with whatever weapons are at hand. They have also learned the importance of stripping the dead of their weapons and ammunition. Simply to have something to fight back with against a fully equipped and well-supplied professional army. وصلنا بآخر معركة غنائم على دبابة تي 72 وعلى عدد كبير من البواريد الكلاشنكوف بالإضافة للرشاشات وقوازف الأر بي جي والزخيرة اللي متواجدة معهم Skirmishes between both sides continue every day Ambushes are common and the rebels continuously apply pressure to loyalist strong points attacking security stations, border crossings, military bases, and rooting out their enemy wherever they may hide, including houses of worship. The rebels are determined to annihilate Assad's forces and gladly make use of any weapons they capture in the process. بالتأكيد ليست له لديه الأسلحة والذخيرة الكافية لكن بما لديه هو يقاوم ودائما يحصل على الذخيرة التي تمكنه من الاستمرار في المعركة من خلال العمليات التي يقوم بها ضد كتائب الأسد وهي عمليات يومية مستمرة ولا أعتقد أن الذخيرة ستنضب لدى الجيش السوري الحر إلا في اللحظة التي ستنضب لدى جيش الأسد. The different rebel factions in Syria, despite being united in their quest to topple the Assad regime, are very different in their philosophies and paths. While some have opted for organized military resistance far from political agendas, most notably among the Free Syrian Army. Others apply a more extreme religious interpretation to their struggle, influenced by the members of their respective groups. Islamist movements found a willing and receptive audience in the Syrian rebels who needed help, funding, weapons and training. What jihadist and Salafist groups already existed among the resistance soon grew into brigades and regiments which, even though they do not fall under the jurisdiction of the Free Syrian Army, Nevertheless, bear arms alongside their brethren. لا ننكر أن هناك بعض المجموعات التي أصبح لديها ميول تطرفي، وهذا الميول لأكون صريحا لأكون صريحا يتحمله المجتمع الدولي. Islamist rebels have a different method of dealing with captured loyalist soldiers. The specifics of their trials, which end in a field execution most of the time, are judged individually by each group's religious authority. The <laughs> 
فنقوم بقتله رميا بالرصاص وأما من ألقينا القبض عليهم ومن لم يثبت في رقبته دماء ولا حمل السلاح مع أنه في معسكراتهم من كان اختصاصه الأغذية أو المطاعم أو أو فخلينا سبيله بعد فترة من الزمن وجيزة بضعة أيام بقي عندنا وسلمناه إلى أهله The FSA has a different approach to dealing with prisoners from pro-Assad forces. هدفنا إقامة دولة مدنية مبنية على العدل، مبنية على الحق. نحن لا نؤمن بأي بقتل أي شخص قبل محاكمته وإدانته بكل الأدلة الدامغة حتى. وإذا حصلت هذه هذه الحالات فهي فردية. The wholesale destruction of cities was, inevitably, causing civilian casualties. The rebels played an undeniable part in transporting the injured multitudes to where they could receive medical attention. We are more than 20 people لإخلاء الجرحى من حمص إلى المناطق هذه ومن هنا إلى تركيا والطرقات تعرف كلها محاصرة وكلها نأخذ أبعض الطرق والأسلم لسلامة المواطنين والمصابين The formation in Qatar of the National Coalition for Syrian Revolutionary and Opposition Forces which replaced the National Syrian Council as the representative of the Syrian people is representative in turn of the fractured nature of the Syrian resistance. But perhaps it is this fragmentation that allowed the revolution to go on for as long as it has, in addition to external factors, such as the unwillingness of the international community to take direct action in the conflict for fear of facing another Libya or Afghanistan. What we're seeing taking place in Syria is heartbreaking. And that's why we are going to do everything we can to make sure that we are helping the opposition. But we also have to recognize that you know, for us to get more entangled militarily in Syria is a serious step. And we have to do so making absolutely certain that we know who we are helping, that we're not putting arms in the hands of folks who eventually could turn them against us or our allies in the region. Foreign intervention in Syria coupled with internal splits between pro- and anti-regime forces, has massively impacted the balance of power in the region, especially with the rise of Iran as a political power. The Russo-Chinese stance of supporting the Assad regime in this conflict is now sending waves of panic through the populace. Who now fear that a sectarian civil war is looming. قام النظام بعدة مجازر هو من قام بها من خلال شبيحته بقرى علوية للإيحاء لأبناء طائفته انظروا ماذا يفعل أهل السنة بكم ويجب أن تصدقوا رواياتنا أنهم خطيرين وأنهم يودون أن يقتلعوكم The fighting continues The unimaginable bombing continues and civilians escape both within and outside their country's borders either to camps or even among olive groves all seeking to escape the fighting and the regimes violent reprisals. We have been here for 10 days. We came to the airport with the airport, with the MIG, and the airport is going to be able to get the airport and the airport is going to be able to get the airport. We have been here in the airport of Fuzlika. We have been here for more than 3-4 days. The life is going to be a mess. We don't want to live anything. We don't want to live anything. 
The rebels played a role, however basic, in delivering humanitarian aid to refugees. The supplies were mostly medical in nature, catering to very basic maladies and injuries. Antibiotics, first aid kits, as well as basic foodstuffs. Which was often prepared and served by volunteers eager to share the bounty of a truly free meal away from tyranny. The Syrian people will not shirk from their revolution. They are committed to bearing arms against the regime and to continue the fight even unto victory. The end seems closer at hand than ever before. Vast swathes of the country have been cleared of Assad's forces, and the rebels carry on, committed to protecting their countrymen, eager for the resolution. Their hope lies in the international community to hold back the advance of Assad's armor and his air force, against which they are all but helpless. إننا تجاوزنا مرحلة الثورة وأصبحنا في حالة حرب في حالة حرب حقيقية نواجه فيها أقوى أنواع الأسلحة نحن بالبنادق نواجه الدبابة نواجه الطائرة نواجه راجمات الصواريخ فنحن الآن نحتاج إلى ما يواجه هذه الأسلحة بشكل أفضل نحتاج بالشكل الأساسي إلى مضادات الدفاع الجوي مضادات الطائرات For the sake of their freedom to see the flag of the Syrian revolution fluttering over a free Syria, to see the end of the regime's injustice. The Syrian rebels continue to support one another and to sharpen their wills. They are determined to achieve the emancipation from oppression that the Arab Spring promises and are galvanized by the righteousness of their cause. But this is where the going gets tough. Ya Bashar, jinaka bi muqatilin, yuhibbuna al-maut kama antum tuhibbuna al-hayat.